Tonight, we will be camping in a watchtower alone on the Great Wall of China. It's a bit spooky. This is one of the craziest moments of my life. But before we camp, we have a five hour hike along the remote part of the Great Wall. Let's start our day in Beijing. Good morning, guys. We're in a little bit of a rush this morning. We've got to get to the subway so that we can get to our train. We're going on a high speed train for the first time and then we'll be at the Great Wall of China. It's about half five at the moment and our train leaves at about 6.55 from the North Beijing railway station. We've got a little journey across the city and then we'll be there. There we go. On the Beijing subway, every time you come into this subway area, you have to go through airport type security. So our bags like these have to go through scanners, which is pretty crazy, but I guess it's very safe here. Here we are, Beijing Bay Railway Station. That should be our train. Gobuku, 6.55. There we go, platform 11. When we get there, this will be my second wonder of the world because I also went to the pyramids, but this will be Amelia's first. Yeah, it's my first wonder. It will be a wonderful time. And it's time to Hopefully. wonder at its wonderness. I think our train is just up here. It's quite funny because our first few days in Beijing, we probably saw hardly any foreigners, even at some of the tourist attractions. But now we're going to the Great Wall, we've already seen about five, six other foreigners. This is our train. We'll be getting on for the next two and a half hours. Thank you. We have started our journey, our high speed rail journey to the Great Wall of China. Once we get to the railway station, we're gonna meet our guide and he's gonna take us to a part of the Great Wall of China which is not visited much by tourists. We've just seen our first glimpse of the Great Wall of China and it looks so beautiful amongst the mountains right now. Ah. Yes. We had just met up with our guide. She showed a photo of us that we took yesterday and sent to them, which was quite funny. I don't think she speaks any English. Hello. Hello. This is so cool. For the first time, we are out in the countryside of China and it looks beautiful. It is so green all around us. Oh, wow. Look at these. This is like the fanciest car I've ever been in. It's just so funny because we have no communication. Well, obviously we can use like translation apps, but there's no other way. But smiles go a long way when you're traveling. A little tip for you. We are just starting our four hour hike with our guide. Um, there's definitely not much communication between us because of the language barrier, but this is going to be an adventure. Amelia. I'm Joe. I'm Joe. 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 Yeah. <laughs> this is such a funny experience because there is no communication, like no English, and we have no Chinese. We've started hiking up this hill along this path, which looks very, very new, but there is no one else around. It's like this is a very new or very exclusive part of the wall, which maybe there is becoming more popular, I don't really know. But it does feel like we are heading up to some sort of the wall. Oh wait, there it is, up there. In the distance we can see it. The Great Wall of China. Warm, it's quite hot isn't it? It is warm. I thought it was going to be cloudy today but the sun is out. Here we go, the first part of the wall. We are on one of the wonders of the world, the Great Wall of China. So I think this must be an original watchtower, an original part of the wall because it's all been restored here. You can see like kind of the metal scaffolding that's been put in to hold it up. And if you didn't know, the Great Wall of China is extremely old, over 2000 years old. So obviously it has eroded a lot and is very broken in many parts of the wall. It really does feel quite surreal being here. And tonight, the fact that we're gonna be sleeping in one of the watchtowers around here. Always a little bit scary because we're just going to be out here alone. The guide does not stay with us. There is a snake skin there. How are you feeling about camping tonight? Didn't know there was a lot of snakes, but I'll keep an eye out. <laughs> uh, yeah. Wow, this is crazy. We are on the 24 eye tower and I think the eyes mean that like the little holes in the wall, what they're called? Windows. Windows. Is that what you call them in a castle or a tower? I don't know. It is just a bit overwhelming being here right now on top of this tower in China. 
Our guide told us via our translate app that we are actually going to be sleeping over near the tower over there. So we're going to be sleeping basically in one of these things, I think. Okay, back down we go. You don't want to go through that hole, that wouldn't be good. No, it's so steep, I don't know how to do this. We have only seen a handful of people, maybe eight to ten other people here. And this is the Great Wall of China. It is one of the biggest wonders of the world. And it's just empty, but it's because we come to this unusual, this exclusive part of the wall. But this part, you can see it's so overgrown with plants all the way through it. Probably what it originally looked like. Wow, that bit is so tall. There's literally plants like all down the middle path. Like there's no way we could walk on that bit. It's so old. It is just crazy to think how on earth did they build this wall, which is so long and in so many difficult terrain. I'm struggling enough walking in this heat up and down these mountains, but to bring all these big rocks, big boulders up to build this wall must have been very difficult. And I wouldn't want to be doing it myself. I've heard that about 400,000 to 500,000 people died, they reckon, building this wall, which is just an insane amount of people that have put work into this. It's crazy to me that this thing goes all the way to the desert in the west of China and also finishes at the east in the sea. Oh, look, there's barbed wire up there. Apparently you shouldn't lick the wall though because it has arsenic in it, which is poisonous. Yeah, tip, do not lick the Great Wall of China. Because it has arsenic in it, it's supposed to stop it decaying quite so much, but obviously it is very old, so it has still decayed quite a, quite a bit. 62 years old, it's crazy. <laughs> this again? Again? Wow. She's so healthy. No wonder she's so fit. Yeah. It was nice to have a little sit down and just a little conversation over Google Translate. The translation app we both use is not working very well or it's very hard to translate because there's definitely, it's definitely not a smooth translation. We're getting some very weird answers. Some of these sections are so like slippy. Oh my God. We were literally almost like vertical then and Joel was like slipping down, almost had to give him a bum push up the mountain. <laughs> <laughs> what have we got here? I have no idea. Do you know what that is? No, she just handed us these. Mm. Is it good? Mm, really good. Yeah, try it. Oh, wow. Oh. Oh. It's almost like a grape, mm. but with lots of little, like more looks like a raspberry, but tastes like a grape. <laughs> we have just started walking on an intact bit of the original wall of the Great Wall of China. Look at this. I think the surface must have been redone, but generally the rest of it is fine. They said it wasn't, but I mean, it, it looks, looks almost in good condition. I'm honestly a little bit overwhelmed. Like this is better than I could ever imagine. Just being surrounded by no other tourists, beautiful landscapes in this remote part of the wall. It's something incredibly special. We have just arrived at a massive entry and it's crazy because we just came up a little road and that little staircase to get to the wall. And this is the other entry, which is huge. If someone knows why it's so empty or is it because it's a Sunday, someone explain in the comments because this is very confusing or is it just a very untouristy part of the Great Wall? The last couple of hours we've had just to chill and basically shower, like refresh. So we're feeling a lot better, a lot rested up because we did like 18,000 steps this morning and this afternoon. Look what I just got given by our guide. There's these little certificates of achievement. It says, for the outstanding achievement of successfully hiking and camping on the Great Wall of China. We haven't quite done that yet. Yeah, we haven't quite done camping, but we will. We will not give up. We have just sat down to have some dinner. We have no idea what we are having, but I think it's going to be good. And if there's one thing we've already learned in China is that you don't go hungry in China. The food portions are huge. Like there's sometimes where we've had to share a portion because <laughs> you just can't eat it all. And I feel bad wasting the food. Cheers. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> it's so nice. We have no idea how many dishes we're going to get served, but it could be a lot. This is our first dish. Look how beautiful. Go on, go home. Cheers. Mm. Mm. 
this is what we have so far. Pretty good, isn't it? Yeah, it's really good. I'm not sure if we have anything else coming, but I'm quite happy with it. We've also just got this other dish. I think it's tofu, but it's then it's some sort of vegetable, but I don't really know what it is. Does it like radishes? I don't know. After that amazing dinner, it is finally time to head up to the Great War once again and cap on the Great War. Now, this isn't a very common thing, and I'm pretty sure we're going to be the only ones up there camping on the wall. So we're a little bit nervous, but I mean, it's going to be pretty sick, isn't it? Not many people can say they've camped on the Great Wall of China. Here we go. Camping. Let's go camp. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. I think we're taking this up the Great Wall. Oh, wow. Yeah. In we get. <laughs> Oh, better take my bag off, that's gonna unbalance me. <laughs> this is so cool. We are literally on this little motorbike tuk tuk thing heading to the wall. Saves us walking because we've done over loads of steps today. Too many steps if I if I'm honest. I'm guessing these are our camping stuff, like yeah. our sleeping bags and mats. I think so. It is quite steep now because we're getting the bike up most of the way. So we've got to walk whilst our bags and the sleeping stuff is being brought up for us. Oh, it's going to be a bit creepy, I feel like, being the only ones around. It should only take about 15 minutes from this spot as we got driven most of the way. But up here, we're going to be camping in one of the watchtowers or I think maybe next to the watchtower. But let's see. Here we are. We've reached our watchtower for the night. This is where we're going to be sleeping. We're sleeping inside there, I think. Blimey. This feels a little bit surreal. Right now our guide has left us and we are alone on the Great Wall of China. And there's not even a whisper of anyone nearby. And it's only getting darker. This is where we're sleeping tonight. Inside a watchtower of the Great Wall of China. Already? <laughs> this is a bit spooky. <laughs> this is one of the craziest moments of my life. Genuinely think so. Yeah, I would agree. And it's crazy because you can still see a bit of like orange in the sky in the sunset. But once that goes... How dark is it going to be? It's going to be pitch black. The stars will be out and we won't see any light till tomorrow sunrise, which is, I think it's going to be spectacular. It looks like it's going to be a clear night. Ah, I'm so grateful for these little torches though. <laughs> <laughs> Feeling a little bit more calm than I thought I would be, but it is weird knowing like to get to the closest village or like other people. It's at least like a half an hour walk through the pitch black. Yeah, there could be snakes. I'm not too sure about them, but we'll see. There is absolutely no light pollution anywhere close to here. Because we're surrounded by all these mountains, there is just darkness. Like there's a lot going on in a small space. It's quite chaotic. Let's get these mats down. I thought it was going to be cold. I bought like a thermal top, but it's actually really warm. <laughs> it is pretty cosy in this little tent, isn't it? It's hot, actually. Also, this isn't really made for camping, so there is literal kind of rock under our um, mats. Like, they're, you can just feel all these rocks. They're probably like 2,000, 1,000 year old rocks, which someone has made, and they definitely didn't design it for camping. Or maybe they did. Maybe they used to camp out in the watchtowers. Maybe, but it's definitely mm -hmm. not comfortable. <laughs> we're going to do a world first right now, and we're going to sit, lie down, and we're going to watch some Ted Lasso. If you're watching Ted Lasso, or if you watch Ted Lasso, it's on Apple TV. It's actually really good. Obviously, Apple don't sponsor me, but yeah, I would recommend. It's our favourite at the moment. And we do think this will be the first time someone's ever watched Ted Lasso on the Great Wall of China. This is our sleeping situation. So Emilio on the left, me on the right, and the camera in the middle. It's not the biggest of tents, but you know, it'll do. We are pretty tired, but I don't know how well we're gonna sleep. I'll actually have a look at my Apple Watch in the morning to see what it says, because it measures the quality of my sleep, but maybe tonight it won't be the best I've ever had. No. But I just still can't get over what situation I'm in right now. <laughs> like, I'm like, oh, there's a rock underneath me. But that's, that rock is the Great Wall of China. Anyway, guys, we're going to watch Ted Lasso right now. 
and we will see you in the morning. <laughs> I just woke up. It's about 10 minutes before sunrise and then our tour guide comes up and starts like telling us to get out the tent basically and has taken our tent away. It's a little bit confusing because we were hoping for a nice peaceful sunrise but it's just her, the guide and a friend just yapping away, taking down our tent. And they're talking so loud, like we just want to enjoy this peaceful moment to ourselves. Luckily, I managed to get a couple of videos before she ripped it down. And we said we'd bring it down to her, but I'm, maybe some policy or something, they had to get rid of it at the, right now. And it's not even 5am at the moment. So a bit of a shocker waking up because we literally woke up like five minutes ago. Are they even allowed to have it? <laughs> yeah, it really, it really makes me think that this is not supposed to happen or they have to get the tents out before 5am because it feels a little bit like they shouldn't be here. It's a bit dodgy and weird, if I'm honest. Yeah, it really is. So now our guide has gone and taken the tent. We want to show you around the tent and where we kind of were sleeping in this watchtower. Joel is actually feeling a bit tired, so he's actually gone back to bed right now. But let me show you where we've been sleeping. So... Here we are, this was our spot. I was right here, there Joel is. I and was in this exact position. Yeah, pretty much the on- The tent was here, Amelia was here. It probably wasn't the most comfortable night's sleep, but when am I gonna sleep in the Great Wall of China again? Probably not very soon, probably never again. Because our tent was set up between these two walls, it was actually quite protected from the wind. We're going to hike up to one of the higher points just up here because I feel like we might get a better view of the sunrise and the surrounding area. It is only just turned five and there is quite a few people, different farmers I think, um, different locals just having a little wander in the morning. I can't believe how early everyone is up. I feel a bit odd that I was in bed at 4.30 because everyone else is kind of walking about. but. There you go, different different culture over here. There it is, the beautiful sunshine. Oh, it was a little bit chilly this morning, but feeling that sun on my face, it's feeling a little bit warm. Look at that view behind you. It looks incredible, wow. I will never get over how crazy the landscapes are and how did they build this wall over these mountains. And I just can't get over the fact that we slept a lot. <laughs> That's definitely something I never thought I'd do or was on my bucket list, but I'm so glad we did it. Obviously, even though it was a funny morning, I still highly recommend doing this experience. I mean, there's not many people who can say they've camped here, stayed here overnight on the Great Wall of China, one of the great wonders of the world. The other thing is, if you are more on a budget, you can actually do this hike for free and just get the train from Beijing, so you don't actually have to stay here overnight. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. We have so many more videos of China <laughs> coming, don't we? Yes, a lot. <laughs> a big old series. So please go down there, hit the subscribe button, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.